So Joe, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Howdy. How are you doing today? How's it going? Glad to be here. Good, good. good. It is, Yesterday uh, was a big day. I'm, uh, I'm just getting, getting through my first coffee of the day. So I, I heard you quickly before I was in the interim switching from guest to, uh, <laughs> to speaker say, uh, you know, shout out to the West coast folks and I'm like on the East coast and I'm still sort of <laughs> sipping away at my first coffee. So good. good. Everything, everything is good. And, uh, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Good. Uh, well, welcome. I'm, uh, I'm on coffee number three, but that's the product of having three kids under four. So, um, had a little bit of a head start on you, even though we're, we're in the same time zone, I believe. Yeah. But, uh, in, uh, in any case, um, I feel like others are going to be in the same camp as you this morning, particularly those that are in the Midwest and the West coast. So why don't we start off with, uh, with just the basics? Um, what, um, what does this week mean to you? What does it mean to the industry? How, how would you put into words this particular milestone? Because the first thing that should jump out at, at everyone is this is the very first step and what's going to be a multi-year, multi-phase upgrade uh, that's arguably the most important one in the broader crypto industry's history, given the, the number of constituents that affects and, and the magnitude of the upgrade. So, so let's just kind of put in context um, Ethereum 2.0, what it is as a vision, and then what this week actually means, aside from a symbolic milestone. Yeah. Um, so a lot. There's actually a, great, a ton of stuff to unpack there, and, and really fun way to. We're gonna. Take we it. got 45 minutes, so we're gonna have to <laughs> yeah. cover it all in one answer. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a really really good uh, really good way to kick things off. So um, ETH. Uh, ETH 2.0, the, the, the move to ETH 2.0 is a huge milestone for uh, for Bison Trail, for something that I'm very excited, personally very excited about. I should, I, I'll start with, with like my personal experience. I'm incredibly excited about it personally. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about that afterwards. Um, it's a huge milestone for Bison Trails as a, as a, as a company. Uh, it's a large marker for Bison Trails as a company. Um, a massive, massive uh, uh, milestone for the crypto, uh, sorry, for the, the, Ethereum community, um, you know, this has been, I want to say, don't, don't quote me on this, but I want to say like six years in the may five years in the making, you know, like depending on how, how you define, you know, the amount of work or the, the type of work that's been going into this, um, by some incredibly, incredibly smart researchers and developers working on, um, getting, uh, ETH2 together and, and, you know, for, for a little while there, it was, it, was, it was touch and go. I remember sort of being at events and being in conversations and people asking, you know, like, oh, when is ETH2 happening or conversations about ETH2? And it was always like, oh, soon, you know, next year, six months, a year. Um, and that kind of got pushed along, um, for, you know, for I should say for mostly for very good reasons um, to mm -hmm. end up in, in the spot that we are today. Uh, but it's been an incredible amount of work for, you know, the folks at the, the EF and, and uh, folks all through the community. So that's been incredibly cool. And then finally... Uh, this is a huge milestone for the entire industry, um, and and I've uh, I've talked about this in the past um, a few times, obviously before you know this upgrade happening, um, sort of in the hypotheticals that ETH two is this big jump where um, we have you know probably the most prominent and the most successful um, blockchain and crypto developer community uh, moving from uh, uh, proof of work to proof of stake, from you know, not sharded chains to sharded chain, uh, and, and making an upgrade to uh, the protocol that enables it to, to scale in a way that we believe can service uh, you know, the, the, this grow, massively growing um, industry. And so it's, it's, it's a huge, huge, huge milestone for so many. It's un unbelievable because in, in a weird way, I've never been a part of such a huge milestone for lots of individuals, lots of companies, lots of, you know, groups of individuals and communities and an entire ecosystem all at once. And it's a very, uh, very exciting feeling. Let's talk a little bit about Bison Trails. Uh, you know, I don't yeah. want to make this a, a promotional video, of course, but just give people no. um, a, a bit of context for, for, you know, where you're coming from uh, yeah. as a, a business leader, too, because <laughs> you do touch a, a number of different facets of this in terms of community support, investor support, and then obviously running the infrastructure. Sure, 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 sure. Um, so... Uh, I guess I should probably introduce myself because I'm, I'm not sure everybody <laughs> knows me, even though you gave me a very uh, warm welcome and introduction. I'm Joe Laluz. I'm the CEO of Bison Trails. Um, Bison Trails is an infrastructure company, so we work uh, with the
the world's top custodians, exchanges, funds, token holders, uh, and we build uh, technology to enable participation on blockchains. So we make it really easy for folks to do things like validate uh, on chains, uh, vote, govern, um, any, any form of network participation uh, we enable folks to do. Um, we also uh, recently launched uh, our second product, so uh, QT, which stands for Query and Transaction, uh, and it enables folks to have secure, highly available, reliable uh, read-write nodes on a whole bunch of different networks. Um, so we currently support, um, you know, all the proof. Of, I don't want to say all because there's a lot, but ma many, many, many of the proof-of-stake protocols. Um, and then with QT, we support almost you know all the major proof-of-work protocols as well. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so that's that's what we do. Uh, that's why it's a, it's a big deal for for Bison Trails. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and uh, with regards to ETH two, this has been a you know many many I want to say months, but actually it's been years, many many years uh, in the making in preparation for this. Um, so we've spent you know our team has spent a tremendous amount of time and effort um, working with the different communities, the different you know everything from the different. Um, client developer communities to folks at the EF to you know other companies that are planning to support uh, the adoption of, Eth of Ethereum too, um, and helping them get ready on the technology side. Um, so with with Ethereum too, um, we've spent um, we've spent a lot of time building APIs uh, and technology tools to make it possible for folks that are you know a wallet or an exchange or a custodian to easily. Uh, allow folks um, that have 32 ETH to stake that ETH on ETH2. Uh, and, and we launched that um, a few weeks ago during, I don't want to say a few weeks ago. God, time, what is time these days? Uh, <laughs> like, trying, it, was, it was during the, yeah, it was during the Madaja testnet uh, that we launched it. Uh, and, um, and uh, you know, we've been working with uh, some really, really killer partners um, to go live on um, the, um, on the, the, the main chain. So I'm really excited about it. So there's there's three um, kind of core technical components of the upgrade, uh, which yep. we can we can touch on. Maybe we won't go too technical because we are going to have a, a panel discussion right following this conversation with, uh, yeah. with the, some of the core developers. Um, but we'll touch on that, and, and then we'll talk about the, you know what it means for the for the, for the asset for the currency, which I, I know you know most people are going to care about as as yeah. as much as uh, might want to nerd out about the um, uh, some of the technical underpinnings. Um, but in a nutshell, uh, there's the upgrade to proof of stake uh, versus proof of work mining, uh, yep. which has been years in the making, uh, and I, I think arguably was was really the genesis for these conversations. You know, yeah. way back in the earliest phases of Ethereum, could this could this work? Could there be an alternative for kind of long term scaling that didn't involve miners? Mm -hmm. um, there's sharding, which is basically the partitioning of the blockchain so that. Uh, it truly can be decentralized in the sense that everybody can at least run a part of it, mm -hmm. and the aggregate, you know, collective can can uh, properly maintain and, and verify the ledger of record. Yep. Um, and then there's kind of the bridge, which is the beacon chain. Yep. That ties everything together. Yep. Um, the uh, the first thing that stands out to me, having been around for a while and, and and been part of these proof of work versus proof of stake and kind of economic security model conversations for for a long time, um, is that. Ethereum um, was not the first to talk about this. They were the first large blockchain to kind of take this migration seriously. But since then, there are dozens of proof of stake chains, and there are even a number of, uh, of protocols that have introduced sharding. So at least conceptually, it's been de-risked a little bit. Can you talk about, um, let's, let's do proof of work and sharding first, and then we'll talk about the beacon chain. But can you talk about some of the key learnings that we've seen from other protocols, many of which you support, yeah. um, that give you confidence in how smooth this upgrade may be from phase to phase um, for the blockchain where the stakes are just, you know, uh, orders of magnitude higher in Ethereum? I love, I love the where the stakes are much higher. Um, the, it, it's the the best proof of stake pun there is. Um, the stakes are higher. I think I think I, I, I think Andrew Keys as you beat. Uh, yeah. I liked uh, I, I liked the you can have your stake and eat it too. Um, but anyway, go ahead. Andrew, I'm okay to lose to Andrew Keys and anything. <laughs> Love it. If it comes to pun, most people are going to. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So so not getting too deep into the technical weeds. Um, the proof of work versus, versus proof of stake conversation, discussion, debate, fight, uh, you know, however you want to define it, depending on what part of Twitter you're on, uh, has been going on for a while. That, that you know, that's, that's been happening for, for, for quite some time now. And, um, 
as a company, we have, uh, you know, we, we had a vision for uh, this world where uh, the security, the distribution, the participation in blockchains wasn't going to be um, through mining, through, through you know, the proof of work mining. And we started building a platform to support that a few years ago. Um, and so in a lot of ways, like where we are today is um, this planning for, you know, the planning that started a, a few years ago. Um, I think that, you know, the biggest difference, so th there's a couple of things that you, that you kind of asked here. One is like, what have been some of the learnings in the space? And two is sort of, you know, what is the biggest difference between some of these other protocols and Ethereum, um, mm -hmm. which is also very, very interesting. Um, you know, the cool, the cool part about Ethereum's state right now and, uh, and and this is you know beneficial to everyone that's been building in in ETH two is that we like you said we've been able to see a few other proof of stake protocols go live so things like Tezos and Cosmos and Algorand and uh, uh, you know I don't want to leave any Polkadot um, obviously Polkadot was a big launch um, this summer for us as well um, and so we've seen some of the things that have worked quite well some of the things that haven't worked well um, you know everything from how does uh, you know slashing actually work? How does how do rewards work? What are the what are the ways that keys should be designed and split? And um, how should you know how should the protocol behave if something goes wrong? But it's maybe not necessarily an anticipated issue that was sort of planned into the economic model. And we've seen a lot of this kind of play out, which is cool. The big big difference that we haven't you know the, the big difference between ETH two and any of these protocols, and this has nothing, you know, this isn't about the potential success of any of these protocols, because we're, I'm very excited about a lot of these protocols, um, is the scale. You know, ETH has a, a, a six year, seven year head start on a lot of these protocols that have launched in the last like year or two. Uh, and the develop, developer community is, uh, is very big. Uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of economic value tied up in Ethereum. Um, and uh, that changes that changes a lot of the dynamics. So um, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't I, I try not to pay a lot of attention to like the daily crypto prices or the daily crypto market values of these different protocols. But, um, you know, the next closest proof of stake protocol to Ethereum as a market cap, I think, is an order of magnitude smaller. Um, and, and so it's you know, broken up. Yeah, I think Polkadot's like what, like three billion or three or four billion. Um, <laughs> it's kind of crazy to hand wave a couple billion, but like it's a three to four billion or something based off you know where it's trading. Um, and Ethereum is you know ten x that, <laughs> you know twenty x that. <laughs> I don't know where. I haven't checked Ethereum this morning since I woke up, so <laughs> who knows? Um, but that makes that makes a big 593. difference. Five ninety three. Five ninety three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So ar around that. Um, that makes a huge difference for the. Um, how, I, 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 the simplest way to put this is it makes a big difference for how much people care, truly. Mm -hmm. like, it, like it makes a big difference for, uh, you know, how much folks are, what's on the line, what's at stake, so to speak. Uh, and, um, but also the, the, you know, there's the downside of like what's at stake, but then there's also the upside of what's at stake, right? Like, like Ethereum 2 needs to work for such a large group of people that there's an incredible amount of paid and unpaid I'm going to say like commercial and non-commercial. So, um, you know, uh, donated resources to the success of Ethereum. Uh, and that's, that's a pretty, pretty big difference. Um, so, you know, I would say like, that's a, the biggest difference between Ethereum ETH2 and most of the proof of stake, the existing proof of stake space. Um, as far as de-risking proof of stake in general, um, I still think that it kind of falls into the same category, which is, we haven't seen proof of stake work at this scale yet. Um, you know, we've seen lots of protocols produce many blocks, produce many messages, you know, validate them, uh, you know, like get through the mechanics of running a blockchain, get through the mechanics of successfully uh, slashing, of successfully, you know, recovering from mm -hmm. some kind of uh, some kind of issues. Um, but we haven't seen, you know, long term. Uh, long-term sort of play out of these protocols. And um, that's the, you know, that, that, those are the, that idea of like seeing a protocol exist live and successful for many, many years continues to create the confidence in that protocol and helps the under underpinning of, of the belief of the, the, the economic value and, and the security, et cetera. As you think about um, 
the security model long term, people have talked about two different types of uh, censorship resistance or, or, or types of you know, security from, from hostile threats. One is you know, platform grade and then another is, is maybe sovereign grade um, security levels. Bitcoin is certainly sovereign grade, right? Yeah. If China or, or the U.S. wants to attack the Bitcoin network, it's going to be very expensive. Yeah. Uh, but they hypothetically could do it, right? Um, with, uh, with most proof of stake applications right now, um, the ability to roll back transactions or, or reverse transactions, you could argue that, you know, uh, the security model works for those that are just trying to steal other people's money, mm-hmm. but not for actors that are trying to actually shut the platforms down. So mm-hmm. one of the one of the things that I think of um, when we really think at scale, you know, where could Ethereum, where could these, you know, blockchain powered networks be in ten years? Um, is uh, does this model truly work when it comes to building a, a permissionless a permissionless web that? can't necessarily be locked behind the great firewall of China or, mm. or otherwise, you know, encumbered by, you know, regulators in the West or the East. Um, have you looked at the early returns so far to figure out, you know, who exactly are these validators, right? Is, is it basically people partitioning 32 ETH at a time to run multiple validators? And, and is, you know, is it really just whales and consensus and mm. uh, you know, maybe a little bit of bison trails and, and some of the other, you know, funds that um, that have been invested that are participating right now? Or, or yeah. um, how would you measure success in terms of the true decentralization um, of the network in each phase? And we can start with the beacon chain and what you've seen in the last 48 hours, and then we can go kind of yeah. phase by phase after that. Yeah. Um, so I would actually, yeah, I mean, fa- phase by phase is a good way to think about it. However, the phases can come out of sequence. And so maybe just thinking of it as like short term, medium term, long term is, is mm-hmm. as much as like, that's almost like lining up with the phases anyways, um, is, is probably the most important thing to look at. Um, I, I, would, I would open with, um, and this shouldn't be a surprise because of the fact that ETH has one of the largest token distributions of any protocol that exists. Um, you know, it's up there with you know some of the top protocols. There's a lot of different people that hold Ethereum in general. So there's, which means that there's a wide distribution of folks that have 32 ETH. Um, mm-hmm. That that's great. That's a good thing. Um, separating out the fact that there's a wide distribution, or there's, um, I'm not gonna. I don't want to quote you because you said you actually put it a lot more eloquently, but <laughs> eloquently. But um, separate on the fact that there's a wider distribution of tokens um, doesn't change or doesn't really necessarily have effect on the really short term launch of um, ETH2, because all the there's a lot of pieces that come into deciding whether or not you want to support Ethereum too. So it's, the the way the deposit contract was uh, is designed is that it's it's a one way. Uh, it's a one-way bridge, so to speak. Um, so once your ETH goes and is locked into the ETH2 uh, protocol, you're not getting it back until, um, uh, I believe it's phase 1.5. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, and that's a serious commitment. That's a serious commitment that, um, you know, understandably, not every single person uh, is comfortable with. So... Um, It feels kind of normal to me that in the early phases, you would have folks that have a different risk appetite, often looking more like an investor type appetite to support Mm -hmm. that kind of um, that kind of participation. Um, We put out uh, we being Bison Trails put out a really great report, um, put out a really great uh, post about the uh, validators in the protocol, the current validators in the protocol. Um, who they, you know, not who they are, because we don't know exactly who they are, but sort of what they look like and their performance. And um, I'd encourage folks to check out bisontrails.co slash ETH2. You can see all the sort of work we've been doing on um, setting up and getting ready for ETH2. And you can see that report there. But, um, you know, without spoiling too much about it, the, the gist of it is that there's a pretty good distribution of, um, of different types of validators. Um, there is a pretty high concentration of participation from, let's just call them whales, um, from large ETH holders in uh, in the deposit contract. Um, so uh, a lot of folks that hold a lot of ETH are supporting the early phases, but this feels pretty normal to me. You know, if, if I'm someone who only has 30 ETH, it might be, I might be a little afraid like day one to just, you know, 
put it into a contract and, and say like, well, I, uh, hopefully I'll see it soon. The black um, box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I exactly. Um, and so um, we have seen, uh, we've seen a pretty good distribution of, there's a, there's a lot of different validators, which is great. Um, there is a con there is a bit of concentration. I think um, I was talking to um, uh, Elias, one of our protocol specialists yesterday, and he was telling me that um, I think it's, it's close to, uh, uh, you know, about half of the deposited ETH belongs to Wales ballpark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, H hand wave ballpark. Um, what we also spoke about was the um, the the distribution of uh, success for validators on the protocol up until now, and that there's actually a pretty big distribution, regardless of the client that you're using. Um, but the that the way that you are set up and validating on the ETH2 uh, protocol uh, matters significantly. And so you're actually seeing within like the set of validators that are on the chain, a subset that are you know performing really, really well, you know, and, and a subset that are performing less well. And then even within the subset that are performing really, really well and performing well uh, as defined by um, producing rewards, um, successfully producing rewards. So, um, you know, mm -hmm performing the activities that produce rewards. Um, there's also a distribution even within that subset of folks that are performing well. Um, and so the setup that you have matters significantly for validating on the ETH chain. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's been, it's been a pretty interesting, uh, first few days. Mm -hmm. Um, let's, uh, we, we've got about 20 minutes left, uh, yeah. before our next panel. So let's, um, I, I think we've, we've gotten through, Maybe as much of the technical stuff as we should before yeah. we proceed to the, the the developers that actually built the thing. Yeah, um, that sounds right. So let, let's let's actually talk about the the asset itself because I'm sure that's why a lot of people are tuning in. Um, let's do it. Ethereum uh, Ether, I should say, uh, as an asset, uh, as our analyst wrote, um, really is transformed or will transform and is in the process of transforming as part of this upgrade um, to something that can. Um, earn yield uh, through staking that obviously can continue to be used for uh, for transactions through, through gas payments, and then of course can be collateralized for other applications as well. Um, one, one thing um, that is a constant source of debate between, um, I think all crypto communities, but maybe especially pronounced between Bitcoin and Ethereum since they're the two largest, Mm -hmm. is um, is what constitutes money and, and, and monetary premiums in particular, right? Um, yep. And if Bitcoin, in some respects, because it's simpler and it's, it's uh, you could argue, one-dimensional as a platform or, or at least less dynamic than Ethereum, um, it, it is easier to make the pitch that it's, you know, peer-to-peer -peer cash or peer-to-peer -peer gold or, you know, some sort of, of money. Uh, Ethereum is this unique animal that can be used for multiple purposes and, and from a... Uh, a layperson standpoint that might muddy the narrative. I think mm -hmm. from an insider standpoint, a lot of people are really excited about this upgrade. Um, how do you think about um, what will happen in the next couple of years as people use Ethereum for these multiple purposes? Um, is is this net neutral? I'm not asking you to make a price prediction, but just talk about the dynamics um, with Ether as the fuel and, and kind of commodity asset that powers this platform. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So. I, I, I tried to make it as price neutral as possible. It's tough to, but you know, let, let's, let's just talk, let, let's, let's talk about the levers versus sure. your assumptions. How, how's sure. that? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so first and foremost, this isn't financial advice. <laughs> I don't give financial advice. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, you know, I think one of the one of the things that we've had an opportunity to see in some of the existing proof of stake launches, and this is something that I think will play out at scale with Ethereum, is what happens if uh, you add locking mechanisms into the underlying asset that supports the the protocol. Um, we are actually, funny enough, we saw a preview of this over the summer with a lot of the sort of DeFi activity that was going on with like yield farming and and you know all the, the liquidity mining et, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, there was some hypotheses that were that were you know proving uh, proving proving true uh, around like what happens if um, you know if you you start to lock up uh, this underlying asset. So, um, 
I, I, I don't want to like make a price prediction necessarily, but I would say that, um, you know, given the mul the multifaceted nature of the asset, the underlying asset, so if you use it for transactions as well as use it to lock it up for security, um, there's going to be dem not just locking demand, but usage demand for that asset. And it would make a lot of sense that the asset um, will accrue value because of that, because there's going to be a subset of folks that are holding the asset and unwilling to part with it because they're providing security both either forced because there's a time lock around that as well as willing because they are supporting the the protocol in some you know broader fashion and um this is this is like something that bison trails has thought about a lot like what does that look like 10 years from now so not not what does it look like a month from now like there's an you know 28 day unlock period for instance on you know some protocols and, and less thinking about that and more thinking about if you build a business that's entirely built on top of, you know, permissionless protocols, it is in your best interest to help support the security, the long term security and, and, and you know, so, like we mentioned before, the sovereignty of the protocol itself. Um, so I, my hypothesis is that there's going to be not just individuals and developers that are supporting this, but anyone who owns a business that is built on top of uh, a permissionless network like ETH2 is going to significantly contribute to uh, the the security, the the underlying value of, and, and subsequently the underlying value of the the protocol and the the, the asset that powers the protocol. Um, you know, I, I think that there is, you know, th there's probably parallels or corollaries to you know the existing uh, financial system and. Um, uh, uh, Mara on our team, who I think you're speaking to later at some point, uh, wrote this really, you know, co-wrote this really great paper about um, ETH being the internet bond, which I won't get into because you should uh, talk to her about it, but um, really, really interesting stuff. On, uh, let's talk about Beacon ETH. Um, okay. The, there, there's a little bit of commentary around what happens to ETH versus Beacon ETH and, and whether we basically slowly migrate to this new synthetic form of Ethereum yeah. that is interest bearing. Um, and you know, in, in my eyes, it seems possible, if not probable, that, that this is going to be the case. If for no other reason that as exchanges uh, begin to stake, they're going to essentially uh, re-hypothecate and, and, and you know, introduce this, um, the synthetic assets to, uh, to the, the larger ecosystems that uh, is arguably better because it's more liquid and it accrues interest as, as part of the, the staking mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, have um, How have you thought about uh, your support for Beacon ETH? Does it, does it impact you at all, um, the, the support of the synthetic, or, or is this one step removed from some of the work that you're doing with custodians and, and, and funds? Yeah, um, so it definitely affects us. Uh, it, definitely, it definitely affects us because all of the, I mean, presumably in a good actor scenario, there's transparency around the ETH that is locked against the beacon ETH, the the you know mm -hmm. the synth or any synthetic um, that's that's uh, that's you know liquid or moving around. So, uh, what I mean by that is that someone will be able to go look somewhere, presumably at a smart contract, and say there is one Ethereum ETH. Can't get a getting camera. One Ethereum here, so there's one, you know, beacon Ethereum here, um, mm -hmm. and there's auditability there. Um, you know, we saw a few years ago when we saw the, you know, the, the sort of advent of stable coins. There was a whole kerfuffle around, you know, what's actually backing these stable coins. How do we have auditability into the treasury that's backing these assets that are, um, you know, you know, USD or, or other, you know, fiat currencies that are um, distributed on these these chains. Um, and I think that like we want to avoid that with with <laughs> with these with these synthetics here. Um, so that matters to us a lot because all of the Ethereum that is going to be backing these synthetics should be locked and staked and validating on the the beacon chain so that they can bear this interest and or bear this yield for the, these um, for these synthetics. Um, what we've seen over the last year, we being Bison Trails, is as we've been working really closely with some of the, the you know these top exchanges and custodians and, and you know major players in the spaces. Um, there's a whole bunch of different sort of approaches and designs. You know, some people want to keep it really really simple. Some folks want to you know create these like really elaborate synthetics. Um, at the end of the day, though, the 
Bison Trails as an infrastructure company and as a technology provider works with those folks to, to really run the tech that powers that. So to, for us, it's all about security, availability, uh, reliability, and making sure that we're you know validating and producing blocks on, on the chain. Everyone who's, doesn't matter what your des synthetic design is, if you're doing that, you need that underlying technology. And that's why, that's where we kind of come into play. So we work with uh, all, the, all the folks doing that. So it's really important to us. Um, an example of that is uh, we announced a few weeks ago, we announced a, a partnership with Liquid Stake. So we're powering um, Liquid Stake's uh, um, uh, uh, validators for for uh, their activity. And, and they're doing um, not quite a synthetic, but more like issuing a loan against the Ethereum uh, that they're locking up in USDC. So it's a sort of crypto to crypto uh, loan based off of um, uh, Ethereum that's locked. Which is really cool. Yeah, aforementioned uh, Andrew Keys and yes. Azure Stake you needed too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I think you know, I think I think that the concept is brilliant. And started talking to Andrew about it, you know, you know, quite a while ago. And I know he's been working on it for, for some for some time. And you know, was really excited to be involved because I was like, this is this is you know, I think is going to be you know, pieces of the future around Ethereum. Um, and I think you're right. I think we're going to see a, I mean, I think I saw a few exchanges. I don't want to name any, but I think I saw a few exchanges in the last couple of days announced that they were doing some kind of synthetic. Um, I mean, whatever the big ones, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, announced that they were doing this, this stuff. So, um, yeah, it's really important to us. I do think that that is going to be the direction. Um, I think that we're still going to have, uh, folks, I, I, I want to see, use the word purist, but that's probably the wrong word. We're still going to have folks that want to directly stake and lock that Ethereum on the underlying protocol, um, absent liquidity deliberately. And there's economics to support that as well. Uh, you know, I, I think that, that, you know, you'll, you'll probably, um, see better economic returns locking. You should at least, you know, mark, market dynamics should come into play here where you would see better economic returns, um, locking Ethereum, uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, running a validator on the Ethereum on, on ETH2, um, then if you're just buying a synthetic, uh, and that is a, you know, yield bearing synthetic, but it, we're, I have a feeling it's going to go that direction. Excellent. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left. I want to remind everybody that is in the chat right now, you can always pop over to the ask a question box and include nice. uh, any questions that you might have for me or Joe, but mostly Joe. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and, and we'll do our best to, to answer the ones that get upvoted, uh, to the top. So if there's things that we haven't covered, I see three questions in there outside of what type of telescope, uh, I have behind me, which is the Orion. Um, then, uh, then, then make sure that you fire away or upvote some of the ones that are already in there. Um, while we wait for some of those responses to trickle in, uh, Joe, any other, um, major takeaways or, or, or items that we didn't discuss that you think are, are worth mentioning before we get into Q&A? Um, I think that it's uh, been astonishing to see, okay, it, it's funny, there's almost like a like two, two ideas that are at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. One, it's been incredible to see this steadfast, is this a word, steadfastness of the <laughs> developers? Really is that a word? I don't know if that's a word, but uh, how, how steadfast... After one more coffee, it's going to sound good. <laughs> how steadfast the developers building uh, ETH2 have been. I mean, it is... Mm -hmm. I've, I've been... I'm, I'm technical. I've been a developer my, my whole life. It is really hard to work on something for five years, five plus years, without it, like, being launched. I, I, I don't think I could... Uh, emphasize how difficult that actually is. It's a really, really difficult thing to do. So I've, I've been incredibly impressed by how uh, long folks have been working on this and 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 how it's come together. You know, and uh, the community effort has come together. That's that's been in incredible. Um, at the same time, I'm astonished at how quickly uh, the the minimum ETH was hit once the mm -hmm. contract went out. Um, I actually kind of thought it was going to take a little bit longer, <laughs> personally. Um, and so I, what, what this highlights to me is one, there's just an incredible amount of support for ETH2. I mean, e like years long financial, economic, psychological, mental, you know, intellectual support for ETH2, which is incredible. And two, there's clearly a lot of excitement around it, um, in the short term. 
and that is just like un, un, un unbelievable. You know, it's 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 really cool to see that. And um, you know, in a lot of ways, when we started Bison Trails, uh, we did it with ETH two in mind, and it wasn't because we didn't think of other proof of stake protocols. We knew that they were being built, but quite frankly. ETH was already, you know, getting quite big and we were really excited about the developer community and we were incredibly excited about um, uh, to, to get, you know, the, this transition going and to help support the community and help support the ecosystem because we believe that um, infrastructure plays an incredibly important role in the future of, the, of, these, uh, of these protocols. So I'm super excited. Um, I'm really, really excited about it. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Um, you mentioned the time warp. I feel like the closer you are to some of these protocols, uh, the more your your perception of, of time and, and kind of predictability around milestones uh, seems seems to get warped. Not saying that you were you know that far off because I think uh, if you looked at the prediction markets even a week before you know launch, it, it looked like this was going to take until uh, end of December. I thought that was crazy mispriced. Um, and for for a late person. Um, even someone in the industry, I'd, I'd probably in, in this technical uh, respect consider myself a layperson. Um, ETH2 has always been six months away for yeah. like years, right? Yep. Um, and it, it's become a running joke. But once the actual flag date was set for the for the beacon chain and it and, you know, Madasha was was went off relatively, with, you know, without a hitch. Um, I was like almost 100% certain that that was the most mispriced trade in the world, this prediction market on, on poly market about, you know, not actually hitting the minimum bid. So it's one of those things where once you get to the one yard line, um, these things you know, start to look inevitable because of the work that's gone in. But people yeah. take, you know, take that for granted. Yeah, it's, it's, it is, it is, uh, that is, that is definitely, definitely true. And, and I think that it's funny, like Bison Trails is in this position where because we see, we work with a lot of different protocols, we actually see a lot of similarities between them as they get closer and closer to launches and the things that we believe need to happen before they can actually launch. In, in, in a lot of ways, like I know it was, it had become a joke, like ETH2 is six months away. Um, mm -hmm. I remember being at you know DevCon last year, not this fall, but <laughs> in the previous fall and people were saying like, oh, it was going to happen before DevCon. And um I remember us like as a company having discussions about it and saying like, it's just not going to happen. You know, like it's not six months away and that's okay. And we weren't, you know, shouting from the rooftops because we want to keep folks encouraged and keep the developers encouraged and et cetera, et cetera. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was just, it was clear to us that it wasn't going to happen. However, at the beginning of this year, um, I remember my co-founder and I having a conversation being like, this is happening in the next six months. <laughs> like, and we were off. I thought it was going to happen in like, November or something or October. Yeah. Um, so pretty, pretty incredible stuff. Well, it's a good segue to our Q and a, yeah. uh, Tom Tomas from third wave network asks, uh, this is a huge milestone, exciting, but at the current stage, does it actually add any value? Um, it I mean, it, that depends on how you define value. Yeah, absolutely. So the phase zero is entirely about validating producing blocks and showing that, that the protocol can work. Um, the best way I could define that is like, you know, the mechanics of the protocol. It's kind of like, um, you know, if you want to be a world-class runner, you don't just go start sprinting hundred meters. You, you know, warm up, you stretch, you, 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 you do a lap around the, you do a lap around the, the, the track. Um, and so, but however you're, you're there, right? So like, this is like ETH2 has showed up to the track. ETH2 is like stretching. It's doing its jog. It's doing its lap around, around, around the track to make sure that it's, you know, it's limber and all, all those things. So absolutely. It adds a ton of value because this is the first step into, um, major scaling, uh, and you have to do this. And so, um, uh, it, it definitely does, you know, does that translate to economic short term economic value i actually think probably honestly because it's it's indication right it's it's all about mm -hmm. progress forward pro, you know forward progress so um i think if you were to define value as are we you know sharded and are we moving is the theory moving faster and are you know smart contracts deployed and working better like no not yet that'll take a little bit more time so yeah Todd uh, asks a good one. Uh, how do developers get paid? And is there or will there be a treasury system? This is interesting because uh, hypothetically ETH2 should open the door to this type of funding. But right now it's largely been uh, Ethereum foundation driven, consensus driven, um, kind of company driven versus yep. um, anything that's that's embedded in the protocol like some of the other smaller uh, protocols have done. 
Yeah. Um, so I, what I would do is I would take, uh, you know, economic incentives of the protocol itself and put them aside. So there are economic incentives for validating the protocol. Um, so depending on what you, what you are inter- what your interests are, where your skill sets are, um, and where you can add value to the protocol, there are ways to see, you know, economic gain or financial gain from supporting ETH2. Um, as far as like the foundation and, and, you know, is there going to be widespread developer um, uh, payments? I actually don't know, truthfully. Um, I wish I wish I knew better. <laughs> but um, what we have seen is that there are, in proof of stake, there are often mechanisms to make it, uh, you know, the design I- I- is is uh is set up so that um more independents can see economic gain uh, by participating in the protocol and so uh, right now you need 32 eth and um really really strong uh will and interest and uh uh you know to read and (laughs) unfollow some guides and ask some technical questions and um you can support eth too and and uh, see some of the economic benefits from it excellent uh, we have time for one more lightning round question, and then we're going to kick it. off our next developer-focused panel. Um, what's on your personal wish list beyond ETH2? Uh, any any future of Ethereum ideas, projects uh, that, that, that you think uh, are going to be next on the roadmap or, or should be um, that you'd be excited about when it comes to either scaling or, or increasing the utility of, of this network? Um. And remember, it's a lightning round, so you just need to just spit out your hottest takes uh, and, 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 and with nothing to back them up. Yeah, I uh, I want to see better scaling. DeFi scared me this summer. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think D- DeFi showed me that uh, if the ETH one, as lovely as it is, is not suitable for large scale. And so I want to see uh, sh- sharding uh, uh, help the scalability. Awesome. All right, Joe, uh, you're off the hot seat. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's been uh, great working with your team on this report. So thank you for uh, their time sanity checking and, and going through the um, uh, the 70 pages uh, that I encourage people to read if they're really looking to get deep uh, yeah. in this industry. But uh, it's been uh, great working with you guys so far. Thanks, Ryan. It, the uh, I should just reiterate, the report is amazing. Um, so everyone in here listening, uh, go check it out. It's really, really fantastic. I've had, you know, had a chance to read it, and it's, it's amazing. So thanks again. Thanks to your team for, for putting that together and, and helping move the community and the ecosystem forward. And one final question. Is this Gary Tan's doing, this this beautiful setup that you have? <laughs> uh, Gary has inspired me in a lot of different ways. Um, in, and in particular, <laughs> this is one of them. Uh, he has uh, committed to high-quality video. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's yes, amazing. I, I absolutely have to hit him up because uh, we're already getting blown up in the comments about uh, <laughs> my inferiority uh, in terms of my, my video setup. Although some might argue that given my face for radio, mm-hmm. it's perfectly fine to have a little bit lower resolution. <laughs> yeah, I had to, I had to shave this morning uh, and you know make yeah, sure I was clean looking. So, <laughs> Joe, thanks again. Uh, we'll let you go. Always and, a pleasure. Uh, move right up. <laughs> thanks, Ryan. Have a good one.